So someone commented recently asking me to review Gone Girl, and while that idea really excites me, I also kind of feel reviews would be a step away from looking at things with my feminist goggles. Now of course I could be a feminist and review films, but when you're reviewing a film you're more so determining its worth as an art piece rather than looking at it through a socially critical lens, if that makes sense. If you do want me to review some films, I'd be more than happy to, and it wouldn't require that much effort and time on my part. And of course I wouldn't stray from my feminist commentary videos at all. Either way, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Now before we get to the juicy topic here, I'm warning for spoilers. If you don't want to be spoiled, exit this video right now. Oh hard feelings. I understand. Gone? Okay, cool. So, Gone Girl. Recently at an Oscars lunch, Rosamund Pike was asked what question she was tired of hearing and answering concerning the film. And she's a bit miffed that people think justice wasn't served. Pike says that in her opinion, justice was completely served. She said, These two people, these two narcissists got exactly what they deserved. They got each other. And if you mean the sort of justice where if somebody goes to prison, I sort of think what part of David Fincher's filmography to date would make you think that part of justice would ever be done. I think this concern for justice stems from the gender of our protagonist. Amy, the villain, is a woman. Nick, the protagonist whose point of view we're following throughout the entire movie, is a man. Now while gender and villains is a topic for another video, I feel that male villains get away with their crimes with less need for justification. When a woman is a villain out of her own desire rather than a tragic backstory, we call her a bitch and try to get her kicked off the show and root for her to die. Well, even when she does have a tragic backstory, there is still less sympathy to be had. When a male is a villain out of no other good reason than the dude's just plain evil, we call him a badass and are fat fascinated by the fact that someone is a villain with no other reason than they simply feel like it. Now the question I asked here is, is Gone Girl sexist? Oh, no, not really. But in the wrong hands, I do think it can be interpreted poorly. If you find yourself watching this film and seeing Amy Dunn and going, Wow, raw chicks are crazy. And finding yourself a part of the crowd wishing justice was done for poor Nick Dunn, maybe you need to dig deeper into the film's subtext. Amy is an example of the crazy girlfriend trope or mentality that a lot of guys seem to support. They break up with their girlfriend and then when asked why, they go, Oh, she was just crazy. When, really? You were probably just really bad at communicating with her or incompatible. That's not to say women can't be abusive and manipulative in relationships. But a woman being sensitive and not the epitome of emotional stability does not make her a bad girlfriend. This whole concept is also really offensive to people with mental illnesses. People with depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, borderline personality disorder, etc. can have trouble trouble controlling their moods and emotions even with the help of medicine. This is no excuse for them to be abusive, but on the other hand, someone having an emotional outburst or feelings of anxiety doesn't necessarily make them a high maintenance controlling girlfriend. It just makes her a girlfriend with an illness that you shouldn't be holding over her head while refusing to examine your own flaws. Speaking of examining your own flaws, enter Nick Dunn. Nick is not only a man who believes in the crazy girlfriend, but he also believes in the cool girl, as Amy explains. The cool girl is the girl who pretends to like sports and beer, giving her boyfriend oral and wax stripping her pussy raw. Or maybe it's not a sporty guy. Either way, you can replace that list with a whole nother list of qualities that maybe a hipster would be looking for, or an anime guy, or a geek guy, etc. Not to say there aren't girls who enjoy any of these things, but the cool girl mentality is one a lot of girls in our society have developed, which constantly pits women against each other and says that your power as a woman comes from having a boyfriend or a man in your life who approves of your status. As a result, men and other genders are conditioned to believe that not only are women catty and fake, but women who are more into masculine activities versus feminine activities are more real and grounded and therefore superior. Apparently, if a girl prefers amaretto sours and real housewives, there is no way you two could have anything else in common, no similarities whatsoever. The ship has sailed on compatibility. And also, Nick Dunn and other men who believe in this cool girl philosophy seem to be oblivious to the fact that Sometimes women do things for men without getting any pleasure from it. 
as if we haven't been doing that for thousands of years already. And that's where Nick and Amy's marriage starts to fail. Amy says herself she was willing to keep up the cool girl image for her husband, but he did not keep up his end of the deal. He cheats on her and uses her money for his own benefit while expecting her to still maintain the cool girl image and never get upset about these things because the cool girl never gets angry. Nick is simply too immature to realize that relationships require compromise and communication and an established idea of commitment, whatever it may be, to the parties involved. Okay, closing time. Of course, murdering people and lying about abuse is not the right way to take justice into your hands. But Gone Girl isn't so much an example of the crazy women trope as it is an examination of it. Amy Dunn was emotionally abused by her parents and emotionally jilted by her husband. Like I said, Amy is a manipulative, self-absorbed person. But Gone Girl wants us to look at the people who made her that way. Like her entitled husband and selfish and materialistic parents. The fact of the matter is, women are often portrayed as disruptive and immature to boost the ego of a heartbroken man. Gone Girl is simply a reversal of this trope. Nick Dunn is the disruptive and immature one, and his wife's the one with an ego. Amy Dunn is no Girl Scout, nor does she possess the best moral compass. But she's an awesome antagonist who makes us question gender roles, power, and perception within relationships. So who are your favorite villains who aren't men? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm the Filminist, and I'll see you soon.